Hi, everyone. This is It's a Mystery Podcast. I'm here today with Jillian Baker. Hi, Jillian. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for inviting me, Alexandra. Oh, I'm so happy to have you here. So let me give everyone a little introduction to you. Jillian Baker is a former writing and literature professor who finally threw in the towel and decided just to show them how it's done. She has gone on to forge a life outside of academia by adding blogger and ghostwriter to her CV. She currently uses her geeky superpowers only for good to entertain cozy mystery readers the world over. When she's not plotting murder, you can find her puttering in her vegetable garden, knitting in front of the fire, snuggled up with her husband watching British mysteries, or discussing literary theory with her daughter, which sounds like fun to me. (laughs) So first of all, let's say that we're here to talk about your first cozy mystery called Blogging is Murder. Um, Mm -hmm which is a Jade Blackwell mystery. So tell us a little bit about the book. Well, uh, (laughs) Jade ends up getting herself embroiled by trying to help a friend who is being um, hacked, whose business got hacked into. She, her friend Liz is a blogger and uh, her social media accounts, her website, everything has been hacked into by this woman named Connie. And it's unusual because Connie is actually adding information rather than taking information. Hmm. So she's really ruining Liz's uh, reputation. So Jay decides she's going to help. And what she does is ends up making everything worse. And Liz lands lands in jail. So then she has to really help out. So she gets her, uh, her friend, Gabrielle, uh, who is her lawyer, she talks her into helping out her friend Liz, and eventually Jade ends up um, falling into the the uh, the crime. Figured out who it was, who who done it. You know, she just kind of fell into it. So uh, it wasn't a graceful uh, kind of attempt, but uh, she was she felt good about about getting her friend her help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. And I noticed on your blog you have a post about ten things that are similar between you and Jade. So yeah. you're both um, bloggers. You're both ex professors, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. And so tell us a little bit about then where you <clears throat> and Jade are different perhaps where you part ways um probably i'm not as interested in i i don't wonder as much about did i make the right decision to give up life in academia Mm. where a couple of times in the book she really wonders even though it's been several years should I have given up the safety of an academic job? Uh, she was a tenured professor. Or did I do the right thing because I was ready for a change? So in book one, that's a really big concern for her. And she kind of goes back and forth. Um, I don't have that. I really thought I would miss teaching. And I don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, and I have plenty of things to keep myself occupied. You know, I don't. Um, I have several different branches to my business. And so I'm always writing, uh, pretty much every day I'm writing something for someone. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing. I also live in a bigger town. Uh, I've never lived in Wyoming. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's a lot smaller town than, than what I'm used to. Um, trying to think of anything else uh i think we have more in common than we do Mm. that deviates and and the main reason for that is because when i first started writing this and got the idea for it it was during nanowrimo uh two years ago three years ago almost um and my daughter was trying to talk me into joining it with her. We had never done it before. And I was running a blog, um, running another business, uh, that was a, like a, 
uh, content store and also was freelance writing. And um, I'm like, when am I going to have time to do all this? I, I, I can barely keep my head above water. And the idea of Jade came to me and I decided it was so strong. I just, I kept thinking about it. I couldn't get it out of my mind. New ideas for the story kept popping up. And so I just decided, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do NaNoWriMo and just see what happens. And uh, so a lot of what I wrote in the beginning for the book was actually just a catharsis for me because I was extremely frustrated as a blogger. Um, I was working my heart out and wasn't getting any traction, couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. Um, it, it was just, uh, it was just a really frustrating time for me. And I just loved getting up early in the morning and when the sun was still coming up and writing and just writing, you know, it didn't, I, it was only for me. So I thought, you know, so I think that's why she and I are so much alike. Um, and there are smaller things that um, I, I can't imagine dropping everything and helping a friend get out of a murder charge. <laughs> um, but we are both very inquisitive and um, like to know what's going on. Uh, but so I, I would say that that's why we have more things in common. And, and, I, and I do have to say that I cut about 40,000 words uh, from that first draft that I started in NaNoWriMo when I actually decided to publish. So, you know, all that internal dialogue that I was working out, you know, my therapy got <laughs> cut. <laughs> right. It, it was good for me to know as the author, but it wasn't something, you know, wasn't a lot of stuff that the that the reader wanted to know or needed to know about Jade. Right, exactly. And at what point did you think this could be a series then? Um, <clears throat> once I started, I put it away for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. You know, most authors end up saying that um, because I just didn't have the time, you know, just didn't feel like it was a legitimate use of my time. And uh, I went on to make some changes in the business and uh, gave up blogging for a while. It was a lot happier, but I needed to fill that you know, that creative uh, niche within me and pulled it back out and started reading it. I'm like, God, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I knew I could write. I knew I could write, you know. Um, I've been teaching people to write forever. So um, I, I, as I wrote and decided, okay, I'm going to publish this and really developed the plot um, I could, ju I just started getting other ideas. Oh, in another book, I could do this. And in another book, I could do this. And I've got, I don't know, probably five really good um, ideas for future, for future Jade books. Um, I don't know if they'll all make the cut or not. But yeah, I mean, and I love to read cozy mysteries. And I know that one of the reasons I love them is because they are in a series. I love to get to know the character like she's a friend. And after a long day, I can get together with that friend. Even if I've read the book five times already, it's just very comforting to know that I, I can anticipate what she'll do next, you know? So I, I, I think probably once I got serious about, um, about publishing is when I started allowing myself to think, wow, I could really do more than just do this as a hobby. It right. could really be something that other people would enjoy reading. Yes, yeah. And we should mention that the, there is an, a title for the next um, Jade book. It's called Time to Kiln. Is that right? Yes. 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 And that will be out yes. early next year. Is that right? In July. July. Oh, July this year, 2017. Yes. Okay, yes. perfect. And then the third book should be out in December. Oh my goodness. Wow. So you've got two more this year. That's fantastic. Yeah. Really yeah. great. Yeah. Thanks. And so now that you're doing it more regularly and you pulled that book out of the drawer, um, do you have a regular sort of writing routine or how does that work? Hmm. 
It's really challenging. I know that I, I've read, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of authors will say new writers should write, you know, every day at least, you know, a thousand words or whatever. And even though I do try and do that, I'm running two other businesses. And so there are other deadlines that sometimes creep in. I'm dealing with that right now. I have to, even though I, I want to be working on book two, uh, A Time to Kill, uh, I've got a couple of other deadlines that just have to be focused on. And then I can, and, and if I, if I do try and go and write, um, you know, my fun stuff uh, on the book, in the back of my mind, I, you know, I have the little Jiminy Cricket voice saying, you have other work that people are expecting on time, you know, so um, because I ghost write still. So um, I have to listen to that Jiminy Cricket. I have to get that out of the way so that I can totally focus. Otherwise, the creativity isn't there. Mm -hmm. So I, even though I would really like to say, but I will say also that I go the other direction. Mm -hmm. um, just last week, I spent um, three days straight just writing the book. And mm -hmm. yes, I had other things I was supposed to be working on, <laughs> <laughs> but it was just flowing. And you know how that feels yeah. when it's flowing, you just have to go with it. So I have to be, I guess, flexible with that. But I don't write every day, even though I wish I, I wish I could say that I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, and it sounds like that kind of flexibility works for you, works for the type yeah. of business that you're running, that kind of thing. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. as a literature professor and a writing teacher, um, was there anything about writing a book that surprised you or, or yeah, took you by surprise? Yeah, um, definitely. I had never, ever written fiction before. Mm. I had, uh, I went back to grad school, it's been six years ago, I guess, uh, no, 10 years ago, I guess, when I started, um, and loved that and, you know, wrote a lot of academic papers and, and actually my mentor was training me to, um, to go on to get my PhD, which I decided not to do later, but, um, you know, so I, I had been working in myself, not just teaching, but working in the writing process very recently in my life and felt very comfortable with that. And I think when I started uh, writing the book for real and knew that I would, was going to publish it, one day it just dawned on me, this is the same writing process that I used for everything else I've ever written. Um, and I've been telling students that all along. The topic changes, but the... <laughs> But the, the process doesn't. But somehow, I think, uh, or I know I always did, and I think probably many people think, there's something magical about writing fiction that is different than, um, you know, writing academically or writing, you know, technical stuff. Um, but what I found and what, what really excited me was, I know how to do this. Yeah, I needed to learn more about how to develop plots and all that sort of thing. And I'm still learning and I will be learning for a long time, I'm sure. And I love learning new stuff. So that's great. But what really excited me was I saw myself doing exactly the same thing. I would, you know, I just sit down and type a zero draft as far as I could get. And then I would stop and do some more research. And then I would get all fired up again and get, you know, get excited. And then I'd go forward. And that back and forth is exactly the way I do it uh, when I'm writing fiction. Mm -hmm. So that really blew me away. But it gave me, I think, a lot of confidence because I was like, I know how to do this. It's it's not the magical stuff is is working within this framework. So um, it's it was very it was a very big aha moment for me. Yes. Wow. And that's so well said is that the magical stuff works within the framework yeah. um, and I think that's the thing that most writers have to figure out it 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 doesn't just you know flow into you like a river all of a sudden <laughs> out of nowhere if we right. build the framework then the magic comes so to speak right yes right yeah oh and yes, that's I so agree. yeah interesting that you found that's the same with academic writing as well yeah yeah 
And you mentioned earlier that Jade lives in Wyoming and you've never lived there. Was there a reason you chose small town Wyoming? <laughs> Jade told me that's where she lived. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, she, uh, I, I tried to move it to Colorado mm-hmm. uh, because I am more familiar with that. We live in Arizona in Flagstaff up in the mountains. Um, but so, you know, I am familiar with that lifestyle, you know, small town. Um, I don't, I, when I tried to change it to a different location, one that I knew more about, she, she just would not go for that. <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe it other than that, that nothing worked. You know, it just, it, it just, I just kept shutting down when I tried to move it to a different location. So I finally said, okay, you win. <laughs> so, but it's beautiful country and um, I really enjoy learning more about it. And, and, you know, it's not that far away. I can head over and, and look at the scenery when I need to. Oh, so. okay. So that was my next question. You have been yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just haven't lived in that you know, haven't lived that exact life, but I've, I was born and raised in a small town, you know, so I, I understand the concept of that, you know, Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Everybody knowing everybody else's business and, you know, (laughs) the town gossip, you know, which we have one of those in the book. (laughs) Right. So every town needs one. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. How else would anybody find anything out? That's right. And Jade is going to take advantage of that. Let me tell you, she knows where to go to. (laughs) And she's going to access that information. (laughs) Very good. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, And one of the other things that I thought was really fun that I found on your blog was a post about how to avoid being hacked. (laughs) Yeah. Because of the topic of your of the book, Blogging is Murder. And um, so you've got, I think it's five or mo- might be more tips for mm-hmm. anybody. And I have to say on an author's website, I've never seen anything like it. It was such a great <laughs> post. <laughs> yeah, I thought, why not? Because that's something that happens to everyone, mm-hmm. you know, or could rather could happen to anyone. Yeah. Even though the way I look at it is uh, somebody who has a blog, you know, in the book you know, those of us who are online have a bigger risk. Mm -hmm. Um, but we all should be more careful than what we really are. So yeah, I thought that would be helpful to, to just about anybody who might drop by. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that really struck me too, was that the, the subjects of blogging and hacking and working online are such contemporary subjects. And yes. I loved that kind of spin that you've put on the cozy mystery. Well, thank you. Thank you. It was, uh, yeah, it just kind of grew out of my frustration, you know. And and one of the things that I really wanted to do was, uh, you know, the, uh, the hacker ends up dead. And um, she's murdered with Hemlock. Mm. So I really liked the idea of having a really modern tale, uh, modern issues, and yet the murder happens with this old-fashioned natural, you know, herb that can be found along the side of the road anywhere in Wyoming, Mm. you know. So I really, um, I wanted to find some ways to put, you know, those kinds of things in there as well. So yeah, I enjoyed that. Oh, good. That's such a, what a great idea. Yeah, to kind of combine the old world and the new world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so you must be on a pretty tight writing schedule if you've got two more books coming out this year. I I am. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely am. Yes. But it's funny because I have uh, I have people, my friends and my family are always saying, "Hey, uh, I just came up with a way to kill somebody," and you know, then they'll tell me <laughs> this, you know strange way to kill someone that they've never seen you know or read about or whatever so I'm getting a lot of help along the way <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great so yeah. But yeah I do uh I I'm in the office every single day you know all day long and um but I love the writing you know mm. I love writing the books I love writing in general and and uh 
you know, the books are just so much fun. And I don't mind the editing. I don't mind, you know, mm. I like all of it. Probably yeah. the hardest part is that first draft when you get to the middle. That's that middle section. I've called heard it called the soggy middle where you just feel like you're kind of eh, going nowhere fast. I don't know. It, that's <laughs> yes. the hardest part for me. Yes. Uh, but then once, you know, once the third part, you know, kind of kicks in and you're, you're past the, that end of uh, act two, then, then things really kick back up for me and I get excited again. So if that's the only little part that I don't love, I think I'm okay. That's a pretty good deal. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. You did a guest post for me at alexandraamore.com when uh, Blogging for Murder was released. So maybe when one of the other two or both of them come out, I'll get you to come back. and love to. Some, oh, I'd love that. Yeah, to have you do yeah. something else for us. for the, Great. To celebrate the launch. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you. you why don't you let everyone know now where they can find your, out more about your books? Um, if you go to Jillian Baker, it's G I L I A N Baker um, backslash blogging murder first chapter. You can get the first chapter of the book uh, for free. And that's my blog. And um, I spell Jillian differently than a lot of people do. So you want to make sure you spell that right. <laughs> and then you can also, I'm on Facebook quite a bit. Um, Jillian okay. Baker author um, is where they can reach me on there. I'm also on Twitter at Jillian Baker. Okay, cool. Yeah. And your books are on Amazon and Kobo, yeah. iTunes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Everywhere. Everywhere. And if they go to my website, I have links to each of the places right on there so they can just access it from there if they would like. Yeah. And you can get them in paperback too. Good. And I've got, got my oh, paperback. Oh, nice. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they can get it just about anywhere. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jillian. It's been so great chatting with you today. So great to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're welcome. Take care. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.